Team Red. Very, very sneaky. Good afternoon, morning. welcome to Turbo Tortoise Tech. If you're new, Shamri's of the four piece Ryan here with Triple XL, and we have the 8700F with a very entry level motherboard, which is sort of out of the norm for CPU testing. And I actually wanted the B650S because it's still going to be the one that I suggest to you. But having tested on this board now, you're going to see that it's kind of somewhat irrelevant, honestly, as long as there's just enough power delivery and it can support some basic RAM overclocking or just kind of default speeds these days for DDR5, this will give a very, very good gaming performance. And it's got the added benefit of still having its AI portions enabled on the chip. Basically, this is a lower binned 8700G with the RDNA cores removed or disabled in this instance. So it comes through at 5 gigahertz. I actually got 5050 on a small um, tweak with the with the chip uh, off of this exact motherboard and it gave me gaming performance that can only be described as insane value because I put it up against the 13600k which is our test bench default and yeah it came away uh, quite handsomely I would say where AAA gaming was concerned and m way more than I was expecting in in certain areas but let's have a look at the 8700f a little bit closer so it's a 4.1 gigahertz um, a base clock across the eight cores that's kind of the guaranteed base clock as it were and then five gigahertz boost however like i said i did a little pbo trick that a friend taught me actually um with the curve optimizer where you set a negative offset of 20 and it's pretty stable on any 5000 series chip or newer and you should definitely do it to your cpu if you have a 5000 series or newer you definitely should do that. Uh, there'll be a couple of tutorials online on how to do it. It's not too difficult, um, but the difference that it makes in the boost clocks to these processes cannot be understated. When I first got it out of the box, it comes with one of the basic Wraith Spire coolers. However, they're actually quite a lot thinner than they used to be. Um, if I just take it out of the box here pretty quickly, you'll see that there's not as much heat sink as there used to be. Now it's predominantly fan. So you can see now it's the Intel thinness of yesteryear. Uh, and you can see it's used because I first tested multi-threading performance with this. I thought this might be a little bit ambitious. And well, it was only 15,000 and change where you're supposed to get about 17,000 out of this chip. It was only once I moved it on to the water cooling that I then got a 16,400. And then it was only then still once I did that uh, curve optimizer that I got over 17,000. And then it was basically in line with the 8700G. So out of box, you can expect just under uh, 8700G performance, depending on how lucky you are with the silicon lottery. But if you do that tweak, then you're going to get really nice curve optimizers or curved optimized performance. You are going to need an, at least a B650 to do this. The A-series motherboards are probably not going to cut the mustard there on. And same thing for the memory support. But that's why Uncle EveTech has done the bundle kits with that. Like I say though, I'm still going to push you towards the B650S1. But we'll get to that a little bit later. The test bench setup. We have a Ryzen, well the Ryzen 7 8700F on this B650M-B from uh, MSI, which is a MATX very entry level kind of motherboard. We've got good, pretty good RAM. The ADATA XPGs, while they 5200 megahertz, they are CL38. So they do have pretty sharp timings for DDR5. And then our 3070 TR Supreme X, just making everything look a little bit small. And then it's cooled by the Corsair H100. It's powered by Deepcool's PM850D. And I've got, as you can see, a Western Digital SM5 72 terabyte NVMe. So everything, all of the supporting components, more than enough to get the sort of best out of the CPU. You'd think not for the motherboard, but uh, got, for, like I said, um, 50 megahertz faster than the quoted boost just with that small curve optimization. Now, the results of this cannot be understated in gaming, where, especially where AAA gaming is concerned. If you're going to look at something like Borderlands 3, ow, big ow for Team Blue, they get absolutely shellacked on the 13600K by the, uh, the, yeah, the, by the 8700F, um, bearing in mind exact same cooling, graphics card, RAM, SSD, 
etc has been used in these benchmarks it's literally just this motherboard and processor that are different and then you're going to see the same thing with rdr2 and even cyberpunk the only one where it fell behind was f123 which was a bit but I don't understand, but it was overall slower. I did measure them slightly differently, but uh, with that much of a gap, I don't think that's a problem. Dota 2, unfortunately, I couldn't test because my replay is now dead. So I'd have to do the 13600K on a new replay and then do this on a new replay. So I've got to sort that benchmark out. But I did extensive Counter-Strike 2 testing on 1080p and 1440p as well, just to double, triple check that single core performance, but it was there and it did deliver. And don't forget that CS test is the FPS Haven one, which is a full simulated test as well. So it's simulating everything on the map as well as playing the game. So it's a double workload for the CPU. Basically, the takeaway from this is 8700F is now pretty much the best bang for buck CPU you could hope to buy. It was built to compete with the 14400, but it's gonna compete more readily with the 14600K. And with that bundle being 10,400 Rand with the good motherboard that you can put multiple NVMEs on, that's kind of a no-brainer. Even if you upgrade to 32 gig RAM, which you should do, because I've tested with two 16s and you want to have that dual channel performance, it's still not going to break the bank. It's going to come in with like 11 and a half to close just under 12,000 Rand. So it's a 2,000 Rand difference in price to basically go the exact same speed. And then in a workload environment, it's still got all of the AI features and cores that the 8700G came with. So you're getting, it's basically just like the F moniker, which has been used by both Team Red and Team Blue. It's just got the iGPU disabled. And this is now the perfect kind of gaming chip in that respect. I still think if you're looking for specific stuff like X3D, you know, for like Unity engine based games like Tarkov as a good example, it really does benefit from having that 3D cache. But for general gaming, I still think this is going to be better in most cases, just based on my testing. I run a 5800X3D even on my main PC. So yeah, I would still say that this felt generally better. I did a full stream on it as well, where we were playing a set of Corsa. It's getting some live coaching from Weza. So yeah, if you want to be a better sim racer, then there's a free coaching session up there from the ye olde sim man South Africa. And so I just felt like everything was super smooth. The 1% lows sort of speak for themselves in that regard. It's just really good, like exceptionally good bang for buck. So if you buy it in a kit from Uncle Eve Tech, then you're going to get it at a bit of a discount as well. So yeah, there's a two upgrade kits with it. Like I said, go for the B650S, just going to give you a little bit more upgrading into the future. And especially with the 9000 series launching and now those are going to have X3D chips and, and we know how their support lifetime goes. AM4 was around for over five years and uh, it's looking like it's going to be the same for AM5. And when they're gaining like this and like seriously battering the competition, I feel a bit bad for Team Blue. 14th gen, yeah, it was a nice little refresh, but it didn't um, come in at this kind of price point. So yeah, we've got to say with stuff like this, if you're looking at a mid-range to like, you know, like a pretty strong gaming type of PC, I paid this with up to like 4070 Super quite happily. You can see with the 3070 TR. It's going to give you the gains and the performance that you need. So yeah, well done Team Red. Your price point is flipping incredible. Very easy to keep cool as well. Don't rely on the stock cooler for this chip. The other, I think it's 8400F or 8300F with the stock cooler should be okay. What I would suggest for this is maybe not even an H100. Just get yourself like a good old like deep cool AK400 or something in that line like Hyper 212 Cooler Master kind of level. A good tower cooler on this with 5600 megahertz RAM is going to go quick fast. It's not going to suck. I can guarantee you that. Anywho, that is all I have for you on the 8700F. If you've enjoyed this review, please do us up with a like and subscribe and I will see you on the flip side.